Hello and welcome. In today's video, you'll use everything you've learned about SwiftUI up to this point to build this slots app. Believe it or not, by the end of this video, you'll have this app up and running. All right, let's do this. Hey there, my name is Chris, and if this is your first time here, welcome to Code with Chris, where we'll teach you how to build an app even if you've never written any code before. But before we dive in, I have a quick question for you. I'm looking for some app ideas to build in SwiftUI for future tutorials. So if you have any app ideas, let me know in the comment section below. And on your way down there, if you wouldn't mind, let's give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps support the channel and I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, now let's dive in. All right, guys, here we go. This is so exciting. Let's start our brand new Xcode project here. And we are going to choose single view application. And for the product name, I'm going to just call it a slots demo. You can follow the rest of these settings, but just make sure that your language is set to Swift and your user interface, most importantly, is set to Swift UI because that's why we're here. You can copy the rest of the settings as I have it here. And let me just choose a place to save this. I'm just going to save it on my desktop along with all of the other folders, the billion folders that I have. Um, I also took a screenshot and while that's kind of starting up, I want to talk about how this UI is constructed. So this screenshot I took of the finished product um, and what's happening here, you might think that this is a, a graphic background, but it's actually not. And I just noticed that this is kind of cut off here. What's actually happening back there are two rectangles. One obviously covers the whole screen, that's the deeper yellow. And then there's another rectangle on top of a lighter yellow that is rotated on an angle. So the only graphic images in this app are these Apple icons and the cherry icons and the star icons. This is actually an SF symbol, which you learned about previously. And uh, those are, yeah, these are the only images, these uh, slots icons. So why don't we start by adding those icons to our image assets? I'm just going to leave this screenshot right here so we can take a look at it when we need to. So if you check in the description below this video, you'll find uh, the image assets that you can download. So let's go ahead into the asset library and just go ahead and drag all of them there. Now I'm going to actually rename some of these to cherry and star. All right. And next let's go into the content view and start building out our UI. Uh, and let me describe to you uh, kind of the main layout containers that we have. So in order to have elements stack one on top of each other, we use a Z stack or a Z stack as you might call it. Uh, so that's how we're getting the two rectangles for the background stacking on top of each other. And then on top of that background, we have a V stack, which contains all of our main user interface uh, elements. So um, in that V stack, we have this title, which is essentially just an H stack, a horizontal stack with an SF symbol, a text label, and then another SF symbol. Uh, and then this is a text label with just a rounded background color. And here we have an H stack with three images. And then finally we have a button down here and that all of those elements I just described are in a V stack sitting on top of the background. So why don't we go and construct that? So I'm going to get rid of this text label right here and I'm going to create a, a Z stack. I'm going to call it a Z stack, whether you, uh, this is, I'm Canadian in case you didn't know. So I'm going to create a rectangle right there. Let's that doesn't have any color. We probably won't even see it. So why don't we, oh, there we go. Add a foreground color. Now for the actual color, I am going to create a new color and I'm going to specify the red, green, and the blue, because I did this in uh, Figma where I picked a specific color and then you can kind of see the red, green, blue breakdown. And so I'm going to specify those values, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I have them written here. So for red, I have 200 for green. I had 143 and for blue, I had 32. 
So there we go. There's our rectangle. Um, and we also want it to go to all the edges, ignoring the safe area, right? So I'm going to say edges ignoring safe area, and I'm going to pass in all because I want it in all directions. So there we go. We have our first background. Now uh, let's add a comment here first. And I'm not I'm really not liking the way that that's looking. So it just looks okay. Let me just go up here, uh, structure and re indent everything like that. So it looks neat and tidy. Okay, so let's do another rectangle. And this one is going to be uh, again foreground color. This one I also have a specific color. So I'm going to specify that. Um, and for this one, the red is 228, the green is 195, and the blue is 76. All right, and uh, I'm going to rotate it, rotation effect, and I'm going to specify an angle. So create a new angle object and pass in 45. And then I'm going to specify ignore uh, edges. So it goes all the way to the end. There we go. All right, so that's our background. Now uh, we have our V stack. Right, our main V stack that contains all the elements sitting on top of that background. So as I described here, in the first element inside that V stack, that is actually an H stack containing uh, the star, the text, and another star. So let's go and add our H stack here. And I'm just gonna add a title. Um, and then this is going to be like, credits, counter. All right, so let's do this first. H stack, what do we have? We have an image and inside we actually have uh, an SF symbol. So let's fire up the SF symbols app. And what I wanted was star. So this is the one I chose star dot fill. And so I'm going to close that. And we're going to use that star dot fill and it's black by default, but I decide to set a foreground color of yellow. So there's that image. It's small now, but we're going to make it a little bigger in a second. All right. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And in between there, I'm going to put a text label. So this guy uh, just said Swift UI slots. Now I made this font bold. So uh, let me just see exactly. Yeah, I did font weight of bold and foreground color of white. So I, I used font weight and I passed in bold, but you can actually maybe just call bold like that. That's cool. Foreground color and then let's do white. So I guess bold has its own modifier, but you could also do it like this where you pass in a font weight and then you can choose bold. There's a couple more options here, but I wonder if like heavy and black and light have their own modifiers too. Let's just double check black light. I guess because bold is so common that it has its own modifier. Whereas if you wanted to use black or heavy or light or the other font weights, you're going to have to use the font weight modifier and pass in that specific one. All right. So that's cool. And then in order to make it bigger, um, I added a scale effect of uh, two. All right, so now it's looking a little bigger. It's in the center, which is fine. As we add more elements into our V stack, that's it's going to space out, and then we're going to take a look at adjusting all the spacing at the end. Let's just focus on adding all of our elements. So the credits counter, that's this guy right here. So that was just another text label, and. Uh, for now, we can just hard code this text here and we're going to um, make this an actual property or state property later. So for this text, um, I set the foreground color to black 
and uh, I also set a background color. Now, this background color I set to white, but I also added a slight opacity to it. So actually, I might have to just take a look at what we've got here. Okay, so we've got the white background. Okay, and then I set an opacity on this of 0 0.5. And you see how closely it's hugging the text. Let me just zoom in a little bit like that. So what you can do is you can add padding. But here, here's a good point to illustrate the order of how things go. So I'm going to say all edges, use the padding modifier, and I'm going to give it a padding of 10. So you can see that you know this blue outline is my text label, and it indeed added padding, but the background itself is still pretty small. So what I needed to do instead is first apply the padding and then apply the background color to the whole thing. And if I change the order like that, you'll see that then I get the desired effect. And then finally, I added a corner radius of 20. And that's going to give me that look right there like that. All right, next up is the main course here, um, the three cards. So. I'm going to, this was an H stack, horizontal stack, containing three images. So we've got the first image, and again, I'm just going to hard code the image here. So we've got our first image here. I'm going to add the resizable modifier so I can resize this. And I've shown you this in previous lessons in this Swift UI series before. I'm also going to make sure that the aspect ratio is one and for the content mode, I want it to fit instead of fill. Um, so it's really big now, but we're going to add a couple more. So let's add a background. Um, again, I'm going to add a white background with a slight opacity, 0 0.5. And finally, I'm going to round the corner 20. So we get a sort of card-like effect. Now, let me just indent all of these things being very careful. Oops. That was yeah, there we go. Just want to make sure that that looks right. There we go. All right. So we've got our image there, and I'm going to just copy and paste this. So I need to mention here that in Swift UI, one of the guiding principles for uh, view composition is actually breaking down elements into smaller reusable views. Uh, and so I'm not going to do this in this video because I just want to get this up and running. Um, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you and explain some of the guiding principles. Uh, the one I just mentioned about view building and breaking down your views into reusable views, uh, as well as how data flow is supposed to work in Swift UI. And then we're going to come back to this slots app and we are going to apply those principles and improve the code, refactor the code. So right now I'm just going to copy and paste this three times um, just to make things really, really simple. So we can actually finish this app in one video. Now I'm going to add a spacer on the left and right of this H stack so that um, it's going to create some space there. And I could put spacers in between these images as well, but it looks like, you know, they're together. And I, on a wider screen, I don't want them, you know, to fly apart because the spacers will take up an equal amount of space. Instead, I'll just have margins on the left and right, but keeping the three cards together. Uh, okay, so we've got our cards here, and what's left is this button. So we've got our cards. Uh, this is the H stack, and this is the button. So let's create a button element here. So we've got our button, uh, and where's my autocomplete? There we go. So we've got action, and we've got the label. So for the action, I am actually going to just not fill that out yet. For the label, uh, that's going to be a text element. So I'm going to just, for the button, I'm just going to put to do. 
And then here, the actual visual representation of the button is a text field that says spin. And let's add some styling to that. So we've got bold and we've got a foreground color of um, white. So double check. Yeah, we have white and we have this pink. We have a background color of uh, pink. I think it was a pink. Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm going to add some padding to it, but we got to do it before we set the background. So you're going to add some padding to all edges uh, with a 10. So see if it can actually reflect that. All right, I might have messed that up, but let's take a look. Let's actually run this in the simulator and see if uh, oh, the build failed. I might actually have to do something in here. Okay. Uh, I think I messed up my, um, let me just get rid of that button. I think I messed up my curly brackets. So, nope, it's actually launching. All right, so that looks good. Let's put our button back. All right, up here, let's declare uh, some stuff. So um, we have our credits, right? Private var credits equals a thousand. So we can start off with that. And I do want this to be a state property because we're going to be deducting credits and I want it to uh, appear automatically. So in here, I'm going to erase that hard coded text and I'm going to put credits and I do have to convert it to a string because this is an int right you see that so I'm going to do that right there and now I just want to see if I can say self dot credits plus equal one just want to put some code in there and see if that's what was missing mm. oh sorry it's this it's this right here, background. I have to specify that it's a color, a pink, because this expects a color already, but the background expects any, this could be anything. You could be putting an image in there or anything. So I guess I have to specify it like that. All right, so going back <laughs> to customizing our button here first. Um, so we have a padding of 10 right here, and then we set a background. But to me, it doesn't really look like let me just update this UI. There we go. That's what I expected. Now I wanted to add some extra padding to the left and right. So after I added padding of 10 to all sides, I'm going to specify padding again, but this time I'm going to specify a, uh, just the left and the right, like trailing and leading. So I'm going to specify an array and I'm going to put leading in there, comma trailing. And the length of that is going to be 30. So that's going to be, give me a bigger button. And then I'm going to set the corner radius to 20. And so that gives me that look. Now we probably want to add our spacers now because we have all of our elements. So I'm going to add a spacer um, in between here, in between here, and in between here. And also uh, probably at the top and the bottom. Got a spacer there at the bottom. Got a spacer in between the button and there. Got a spacer in between the cards and the credit counter. And then another spacer between the credits counter and the title. And then I could put a spacer there as well. So there. In this app, I actually used padding instead of a spacer up here. Um, but right now on the whim, I'm deciding to use that, which is fine. Okay, cool. So now all we have left to do is when they hit spin, we're going to write the code here to uh, change the images. But there are a couple of steps we have to do before this because here we hard coded the images, right? So we're not going to be able to change them 
unless we make them state properties as well. So let's first start by declaring an array of uh, the different asset names. So I have private var symbols equals, we have apple, we have a star, and we have cherry. And second of all, this is going to actually be a state property. We're going to have um, an array containing or representing the data, representing uh, which icon uh, these these reels took. So, you know, this could be from zero to two, right? So zero would be apple, one would be star, and uh, two would be cherry. So this array, this numbers array, represents the state of what symbols these guys are. So what we're going to do is when the user hits spin, we're going to randomize a number from the, between zero to two, representing one of these symbols. And we're going to place it into you know, these slots representing these three cards here. And for the images, for the image elements here, right? instead of specifying Apple, what we're going to specify is uh, the symbol array, right? symbols. And uh, inside, we're going to specify, uh, since this is the first image, this would represent, uh, sorry, let me just type this out first, numbers, OK. So this is the first image, right? So numbers 0 is, is the, the value that represents that card. Right, this is going to be uh, index one, and this is going to be index. This guy's going to be index two. This guy's going to be index one, and this one's going to be index zero. So essentially, um, instead of doing that, we are going to do that. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you. So for example, right now it's still showing apples because you know the numbers are all zeros, but let's say we randomize it and we get one for this, we get two for that, and we get zero for that. So if we resume it again, now you're going to see them um, different. The reason for this is because um, this one is reading one, so it's going to grab that uh, symbol, and this one is two. So that's going to be 0, 1, and 2. So it's going to grab that image. And finally, at that position, we still have 0 and 0. At that index, we get the Apple image. So that's what we're going to do here. So inside the button action, we're going to randomize a different number for um, each of these indexes in the numbers array. So we're going to do uh, self.numbers at 0 is equal to int dot random and uh, where's my autocomplete there we go so we're gonna randomize between zero to the number of symbols that we have minus one and that's gonna uh, give us zero to two all right we're gonna do the same thing for number one and number two. Uh, so even just doing this, we can go ahead and run our app and take a look at these guys randomizing because uh, we should be able to see our UI update automatically. Remember that numbers is a state property, right? So when we're changing these uh, indexes, the value inside these indexes, the UI is going to see that change and it's going to automatically um, update what image those image elements are displaying. Okay, next up, change the images. We're going to um, check, check winnings. Uh, and let's declare another one up here, another property here for the bet amount and we'll say five each time they spin we'll take away five credits and if they win um, if 
they get a match, we are going to give them, um, let's say, 10 times their bet. So here we're going to check winnings. And all we have to do here is just say if you know self dot numbers zero is the same thing as numbers one and self dot numbers you know if the second one is equal to the third one then all of them are essentially the same one so um, we can say self dot credits equals plus equals bet amount uh, times 10 else self dot credits uh, minus equal bet amount oops I forgot the self keyword there as well all right so let's take a look and see if this works yeah so we can see it deducting here and when we can finally get a match, this is why you shouldn't gamble. Oh, there we go. Ah, and I don't, I don't even know. Um, I guess we could add a label to just say what the status is, but this is where I'm going to leave things here because we have a, a working slots app. In the next video, we're going to talk about um, some of the core guiding principles in SwiftUI, and then we're going to come back and improve this app. So in this single video, you built a working SwiftUI app. Isn't that amazing? However, I did mention that there are improvements that we could make to this app structurally to enable us to build upon it and take it even further in future videos. In the next lesson, I'll tell you about two of the most important guiding principles when it comes to SwiftUI regarding data flow and view composition. After that, we're going to come back to the slots app and make those structural improvements that I talked about. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.